Rugged and Chelsea are two words you don't often hear together, especially when you could also use the word like sleek to describe Chelsea. But that's the theme of this very cool weather-ready boot from Koyo. It's a company best known for their luxury sneakers, but they've branched out into boots in a pretty compelling way. This is Nick at Stridewise.com, filming in glorious midtown Manhattan, the worst place in the city, but the cheapest place to rent a filming space. And I've spent a few weeks and a couple of rainstorms slushing around in these boots, and even though they're not good gear welted, they're very water resistant, and they can be resold. Indeed, I've done the work, the hard yards, as we say in Australia, and like, this is more water resistant than your average Goodyear welted boot. What have we got? This is the Fermo boot. So Koyo's big emphasis is, I mean, they quite like minimalist designs, maybe because the founders are from Germany in that, that area and Scandinavia, maybe more so, are known for kind of minimalist design. And after, in my opinion, making the market's best luxury sneaker, you check that video up there, I did with the Modest Man for a look at the best luxury sneakers. After making that, they moved onto boots. I didn't love their first offerings, but after a year or two of boots, they came out with two Chelsea's that I really, really like. One is the Trento, which is dressier. Although I got that one in suede and I can wear it with a t-shirt all the time, but like, like it can be dressed up and down too, I think. And then there's the Fermo, which is meant to be for rougher weather. So let's talk a bit about it, man. Like at, at first glance, it's a casual boot with a casual sole and casual leather, but I'm a massive fan of the fact that unlike some other casual, perhaps more work-focused Chelsea's like Blundstones or Redbacks, this doesn't have that like round bulbous toe. Like it manages to be relatively sleek. So you get a nice balance of something that's very weatherproof, but doesn't look bad with tapered jeans or pants, right? Like, like versatile might not be quite the word given this, is, this isn't dressy really. But it's fashionable while also being practical. It's the kind of last shape that most people want from their Chelsea's. Indeed, most Chelsea's are kind of dressy. They didn't start out as work boots. The Chelsea model started out as a walking boot for Queen Victoria, and then it got more popular as the boot of choice for the Beatles. It didn't really gain steam as a work boot until a bit later. Particularly in Australia, where for whatever reason, we just love not messing with laces. And there's actually a Wikipedia page for Australian work boot that's just like, yeah, they wear Chelsea's. That's what they do in Australia for some reason. Personally, in my own style, I can't believe I have a style, but like, I, I, I really enjoy rugged materials with more modern fits. And I was pleasantly surprised when I wore these on a date last night with my very burly and casual deck jacket and found that it worked really well. The luggy sole in particular does a good job of like balancing the slimmer last. This chunky grippy sole, it makes it very able to like weather the elements and ice uh, better than the leather sole on the Trento boot. I actually really like leather soles, but it's kind of a conversation for a different video. The Fermo's outdoorsiness comes from the sole, the construction, which I'll get into, and the leather. The leather comes in brown or black, and it's really hard wearing because it's got lots of waxes and oils in it. Like the leather has been imbued with a bunch of natural water resistant hydrophobic ingredients like that to make the water and humidity stay on the outside and not penetrate the inside. So oil and wax are the, the hydrophobic. So think about how oil floats on top of water if you drop some into a glass. And another bonus is that when leather has a lot of oils and waxes in it, you get nice color variation in the leather that makes it look really cool while also conferring real world benefits. It does make for a very casual leather. This is more matte and, and kind of muted than like something like a box calf leather or a glossy dress leather. But you already know this is a casual boot from the sole and everything. So no one's gonna be disappointed that you can't really wear these with a suit, right? Like you know what you're getting when you buy these. Okay, so we've covered the sole and the leather. The construction is very, very interesting here. Both of Koyo's Chelsea boots are Blake stitched, which has a reputation for being hard to resole and not being very water resistant. And I have some early videos where I spread these misconceptions myself before I learned a bit more about it. I'm sorry about that. For starters, Blake stitches are perfectly easy to resole. If you polled every cobbler in the country, you'd probably find there are more that have the machinery to resole a Goodyear welt than a Blake stitch, but most of them can do a Blake stitch. Just call an advantage to make sure when the time comes, but you won't have to go very far to find a cobbler who can resole a Blake stitch. So that's, that's, that's one thing, they're resolable. The other notion that Blake stitches aren't very water resistant really depends on the model and how tightly stitched they are, how much the brand wants to focus on flexibility versus water resistance, that kind of thing. The Fermo here is very tightly stitched for water resistance. It has a nice leather midsole as well and shock absorbing memory foam that's covered in leather. It has a shank with which to help stability, which most people consider a must for a boot with a heel. It's leather lined as well, which also adds a bit of water resistance and comfort as well. But if you look closely, although it's Blake stitch, it has a welst is what they call it. The Blake stitch means the sole is stitched to the upper instead of a Goodyear welt between them, but they've included this L-shaped welt made from recycled leather that keeps the last closer to the sole and keeps rain from getting in. No, it's not waterproof. Unless you're legit standing in a puddle fishing, you don't need waterproof boots. And I took these out in a storm in Brooklyn last week and very deliberately slushed through puddles and I was really surprised that my socks stayed dry. Like I've never seen this kind of construction before, but it's, it's actually legit, it works. 
It's resolvable and it's water resistant, but as a Blake stitch, it's a bit lighter and more flexible than a Goodyear wallet. So it's really, it's really wild stuff the way this is constructed. Welcome to the fit and styling section, awkwardly filmed in Central Park as an edit because since I filmed the video, since I filmed that sit down bit, uh, Koyo changed all the sizes. All the sizes are different now. The sizing works differently, all the numbers are different. So I just have to film this section again. Uh, basically, uh, they only, they don't do half sizes at Koyo, right? So the idea is if you are a whole size, if you happen to have like a size 11 foot, just order a size 11. This is on a Brannock device in a shoe store, mind you, not like your sneaker size, which is normally a bit bigger than your true size. So if, you're true, if true size is an 11, order an 11. If you are a half size like me, 11 and a half, uh, then you size down half the size. So that's, yeah, 11.5, that's what my true size is, get an 11. A couple of things to know, you're only sizing down if you're between sizes. If you're a whole size, you just order that. When I got these, I was actually a little bit, they felt a little bit tight around the toes, but it did stretch with some wear. So don't feel too stressed out if they're a bit tighter at the toes when you first get them, because this is the kind of leather that stretches a little bit. Yeah, that's it, and no wide width. I can't remember if I mentioned that. So yeah, that's your wide feet, you're gonna be in a bit of trouble. Uh, all right, that's it. That's the sizing section, back to me in the past. Price-wise, these are $365. If you know much about boots, you're probably not shocked by that, like this kind of construction and materials and where it's made. It, it's about what you'd expect. Over 400 bucks would be rubbery, probably. 365 is, is actually okay. Some things to keep in mind with the price is that for one, the average price of a boot and anything made of leather has skyrocketed in the last couple of years. I mean, as has the cost of everything, but like leather especially, leather stuff is especially really having a tough time with inflation. These boots are made in Italy as well. Everything is made in Italy, even the shoebox. So this is a normal price for an Italian made resolable boot with this kind of construction. Also, this leather is certified by the Leather Working Group. Um, actually, I'll just start the pro section of this video here, like the wrapping up bit, and then I'll talk about that there. There we go, all right. I'm on the other side of the title card now. Leather can be really bad for the environment. Most leather on earth is chrome tanned and in badly run tanneries, it can cause terrible damage to the environment and to the workers. But, and this is another thing I didn't always know, chrome tanning doesn't have to be bad for the environment. There are ways to make it that don't produce any chromium-6 pollution. That's what's really, really bad for everybody. I did a video at a tannery in Mexico actually that does cool things in this area, like the, the sustainability side of uh, leather production. You can check that out up there if you wanna learn more. And um, I actually also did a video with Koyo themselves about Chrome 6, Chrome versus Chrome 3, that kind of production as well. You can see that there. So, Leather Working Group certifies tanneries with good environmental practices. Koyo's Italian Leather has that certification, so that's another reason for the price and a reason to know that it's a good product. Other pros, um, yeah, it's a good balance of sleek and rugged. It's, it's definitely a casual boot, but it's a nice way for a modern outfit to wear something very, very weatherproof, water resistant, that kind of thing without looking like you belong in a factory floor, right? Like, not that there's anything wrong with that, I'm just saying this is both fashionable and tough, which is rare for most boots and very rare for a Chelsea. The shock absorbing insole is very cool, a lot of old fashioned boots don't have that, and while there are upsides to traditional construction, uh, this keeps your kneecaps from rattling when you're walking around on concrete, that kind of thing. The downsides are there are no half sizes, no wide sizes. As someone who is normally a half size, I was worried, but uh, again, I, I was really impressed with how well it secures the foot in spite of that. It's not an especially cheap boot, but it is an especially durable one. Uh, if you like Italian-made boots or just boots made in Europe or in a developed country, uh, this is it's a pretty normal price. Aesthetically, I like everything except the fact that the, the stitching under the goring here is diagonal. I don't know if that bugs me more than it should. Um, it's a pretty rugged look with the leather and the sole. Plenty of guys don't like that in a Chelsea, which is considered a dressier boot a lot of the time. If you want dressier, you can just check out the Trento. If you want more work booty, you can check out Blundstone. Uh, or if you want something that's like a welted uh, Chelsea boot, but rounder at the toe, more bulbous, uh, Red Wings Classic Chelsea is a good bet if uh, you prefer that look. Lastly, yeah, the construction here, the fact that it has memory foam in it, uh, some guys prefer to have just leather all the way through. So there are advantages to having like just like leather insole, leather midsole, leather outsole, or even just like insole, leather insole, midsole, and a rubber outsole, uh, because when there's a bunch of leather in there, it conforms to the foot nicely over time in a way that artificial materials tend to not do. So uh, yeah, there are, there are purists out there who don't like the shock absorbing foam there, even though generally customers really like it because they, they prefer uh, having better shock absorbing qualities. But that's a, that's a trade off of that, right? Like it doesn't, it won't mold the foot exactly the same way as a all, all leather boot would with like cork in the midsole and everything. And that idea of a boot becoming a custom fit over time, that's what uh, a lot of guys like about boots. But there's a really strong market and there are a lot of brands like, like Thursday and a bunch of other ones that have been putting shock absorbing foam in their boots for a while now. 
And it's been shown that, yeah, like I think most guys would rather have the shock absorbing foam. So you get that here and it makes for a comfortable boot that can really withstand like quite a lot of damage, I think. All right, man, that's the Fermo boot from Koyo. Um, I, I like it, I've been wearing them a lot. Um, when I first got them, I just hated this diagonal stitch here and I was just like, that's it, I hate them, I'm not wearing them. But uh, it's actually completely insignificant and uh, the boot actually functions really well. It's lighter than a Goodyear welt, but uh, very water resistant. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with these boots. So uh, yeah, uh, link below if you are interested in getting these. I got a full article in there as well. And uh, subscribe if you want more content about well-made things that last a long time. So that's what Stride was all about. Do -do 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 -do. All right, bye guys, I'll see you in the next one.